you want a homestead in the worst way. You want to have chickens and cows and some land to manage. But there is one problem. Like most people, you don't have all the money sitting in a pile ready to go out and buy this and get started. So you're trying to figure out what should you do? Should you take a small pile of money that you actually have saved up, buy just land, get an RV, and start the homestead with your little RV on that bare strip of land? Or should you get a property with a house already, but go into debt for it? We're gonna answer that question in today's episode of Ask Homesteady. This is a rainy morning on the homestead and I'm headed out to the barn to do some of my morning routine. But I thought I would answer a fantastic question that uh, I thought was the best question of the week. That's why we're doing it for Ask Homesteady. If you would like me to answer one of your questions, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is think of the best question of the week. <laughs> think of a good question, leave it in the comments section of one of this week's videos with the hashtag Ask Homesteady, all one word. Once in a while, I'll find a good question and I will remind them to add that hashtag like I did to Holland's Homestead. But generally speaking, I don't find your questions unless the hashtag is there. So make sure to add it to your questions. Now let's dive right into, should you get the RV and the property and be debt free? Or should you go into debt for the house? So Holland's Heroes, I am gonna answer your question, but first I have to go milk a camel. We'll be back with the answer right after I'm done milking this camel. There we go, camel milking done. My son's gonna bring the camel milk in. It's warm today and I don't want the milk to start to go bad. Come on back out, yep, come on back out. I'll bring your eggs in too, and then come on back out. I'm gonna read you some of this question, get a little bit of background on Holland's Heroes. So, Holland's Heroes asks, hashtag ask homesteady. For many reasons, my 11 year old son and me, an older mom with physical limits, are looking for a place to start homesteading. We know we have a structured income for at least the next five years, but we will have to figure out an income by then. I better let those chickens out. They're gonna to be too loud and t is gonna yell at me. She adds, keep in mind, we have very little funds to work with when answering this question. Which way is a better way to go? One, should we buy bare land and live in an RV and build our homestead trying to stay out of debt? Or two, should we invest in property with a house and some infrastructure so we can get rolling with our homestead life but have debt? Already some other YouTube commenters have begun the discussion a little bit and so she added a few more things in response to their words. She says, and I'm sorry to hear this, Holland's Heroes, her husband died. Um, so now the house they were going to buy, they're no longer buying. She goes on to say she was hit by a drunk driver. She hasn't been able to get disability yet. No one wants to hire someone who has to go lay down every couple of hours. I also have no debt at all. One thing my husband and I did after their accident was get rid of all the debt so they could afford to live on his social security. So Holland's Heroes, uh, first off, I just want to personally say I'm sorry for all the negative things that have happened to you. The uh, Sometimes life throws us curveballs. Your husband dying, that's awful. And then getting hit by a drunk driver, also awful. Two things that are not your fault that have happened to you and I, my, my heart goes out to you. I hope that the next couple of years bring you and your son, I, I feel for your son as well, to have uh, to be 11 years old and not have your dad, That's that's hard. So... I hope your life has an upturn and hopefully homesteading can be a part of that. I wanna answer your question in two, two stages. First off, I wanna answer the question you asked, which is, should you get land with an RV or go into debt for land with a house? I wanna give you my kind of blanket statement, what I usually would tell anybody, because that's what you asked. Then I wanna give you personally a little bit more advice, having insight into homesteading, trying to make money from it, trying to start a business from it, 
what I would tell you personally, knowing what I know, the limited amount of information I know about you, my little bit of advice to add it to you. So first, let's dive into RV and land with no debt or land and a house with debt. What do I suggest with that question? So let's start with the blanket slate general guidance that I have on this. And of course, anytime you're gonna do a blanket slate general guidance thing, you gotta throw a caveat out there. I'm about to fill up my IBC tote with water because the one that we tested out this week is already almost empty and I gotta bring this one up into the field for the water situation. So I'll start the hose and then we'll talk. First off, my caveats to answering this question. Should you go RV and land debt free or should you get a loan for a house? It depends. Every person's situation is gonna be different. There's so many variables, so this is not my, my uh, one rule fits all. But there are some basic principles to life that we live our life by that I think apply to this question. So before I get specific about Holland's Heroes, I just wanna talk about the basic principle of buying assets, not liabilities. Now, I learned about this principle reading a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and I'll have a link below. It's a very good book. Basically, the author, it might be too windy to uh, try to do this outside. I might have to go back inside the barn. The author compared his life, uh, yeah, it's gonna be too windy. Let's go back in the barn. The author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad compared his two hardworking fathers <laughs> and found that one of them, he had a, a, if I remember correctly, it was his stepdad and his actual dad, or maybe it was a neighbor dad. That's probably what it was. I don't remember all the details. Read the book, it's a good read. But he compares these two men in his life, his actual father who worked really, really hard and never seemed to get ahead. Uh, he compared him with his, I believe it's his friend's father who was wealthy, really, really well off. They both were hard workers, they both gave it their all, but one did better. And that's really the goal for all of us should be, you know, if you work hard, it shouldn't just be to work hard and be tired at the end of the day, it should be to do better. And that doesn't mean get rich with a bunch of money and stack your money all up high. It just means to see benefit for your hard work. It is very windy today. Oh, look at those camels. They look more majestic in the wind. So for pretty much anybody out there who wants to start homesteading, it is a lot of work, but you should in the end see a return on that hard work. That's how I feel. I don't wanna work hard and sweat and at the end of the day just have not much to show for it, but the fact that maybe I fed myself along the way, which is good, but I want more than just food in my belly. I want a bit of a nest egg for my kids. You know, I wanna be able to enjoy my life without worrying about tomorrow's bills. I think that's how most of us feel. So any hard work should result in doing better for ourselves financially, emotionally, and otherwise. One of the big principles that the author in Rich Dad Poor Dad talks about is acquiring assets, not liabilities. So buying things that don't just cost you, but in the long run, things that actually are valuable, more valuable than when you acquired them, and you do better for having purchased this. All kinds of things in life could be an asset or a liability. Let's look at the purchase of a beautiful pot of mums that they sell in the fall. I love mums, they're very pretty. Or a potted blueberry bush. Let's get very homesteady here. So you have your mums and you have your blueberry bush. One is an asset, one is a liability in most cases. The pot of mums, you can water and they look pretty. You probably spent about $10 on your potted mums. Maybe you bought the cheap ones and they're five bucks, whatever. At the end of the fall, they're going to die and you're gonna throw them away. That $10, poof, disappears. $10 buys you a potted blueberry bush. It's a perennial. You care for it. When it gets cold, you bring it inside and leave it in a room where it's still getting sunlight and then in the spring and you put it back out. It keeps giving you blueberries to the note of you know a basket or two each season, which grows and grows and grows, at the end of its lifespan, the blueberry bush gave you more than $10 worth of blueberries. It actually winds up 
earning you or saving you some money. Let's say you get $20 worth of blueberries off your blueberry bush. Your mom's you spent 10 on and it died. Your blueberries you spent 10 on and you got 20 back. This mom is a liability. It just cost you time, money, effort. It was beautiful. It was a nice thing. Sometimes we get liabilities in our life and they're still nice, but we should be acquiring more assets and less liabilities. Let's notch this up to the purchase of a recreational boat. You want to go out on the lake with your wife and kids and have a good old time. So you buy a boat. A boat costs you money and then it costs more money to upkeep and more money to service and more money to keep good over the winter and all that stuff. You just pour money into your boat. What do you get from it? Happiness and fun with your family. But overall, it is a major expense on your life. A boat is a liability. Unless you're a commercial fisherman and you buy a boat and it costs you $20,000 and then you go out and each year you catch $5,000 worth of fish for the next 10 years. Now you have turned that liability into an asset, something that has earned you money. In life, if you buy more assets and less liabilities, your financial wellness over the long run will be better. So you have to get good at looking at something and saying, is this an asset or is it a liability? And then deciding whether or not to pull the trigger on it. You should pull the trigger on more assets and less liabilities. Now let's get to the question of, should you buy just bare land and an RV or should you go into debt to get land with a house already on it? My answer may surprise you what I generally suggest. So Holland, usually when I answer this question, I really more often than not will tell someone, get the property with the house, even if it means you go into debt. I'm a big fan of debt-free living. Me and Kay have worked very hard to keep ourselves out of debt. And specifically, when we talk about debt-free living and staying out of debt, we really are hyper-focused on consumer debt, using a credit card to you know, go on a vacation <laughs> or even buy groceries, right? We don't wanna go into debt for things that are just costing us money. But there are times where you can use debt as a tool to grow your overall wealth in life. And one of those times is with the acquisition of property. Property is something that always has value. It can go up and it can go down. You can buy a piece of property for $20,000 and in 10 years it can be worth 30 and in 10 years it can be worth 10. But it always maintains some value. Property always has value. And if you wait long enough, it will always go up with the exception of like, you buy a piece of property in the 1800s and then in the 1900s it becomes a nuclear waste site and no one will pay you a dime to own it. <laughs> but generally speaking, property, if you wait long enough, will always go up. So going into debt for the purchase of a property, as long as you are smartly going into debt, you can actually service that debt without jeopardizing your family's well-being. It's a responsible decision. Overall, that's not usually a bad decision to go into debt for a property, as long as it makes sense for you personally. T. Rue, I let the chickens out. I'm sorry that that rooster is crowing, but I do live on a homestead, so uh, there's not much more I can do. He's over there and he's cock-a-doodle doing. Quiet down, roosters. So, so as a general rule, property is something that when you go into debt for, as long as you service the debt, it will be an asset to you. Now, let's talk about an RV. An RV, hands down, is nine times out of 10 going to be a liability. RVs, 40, $50,000 v RVs, the minute they pull off the lot, they lose like half their value. Boom, just like that, it is gone. And that only continues as they get older and older. So if you spend $10,000, on a used RV to go and live in with your son or anybody else watching, in 10 years that RV will be worth zilcho. Now, if you have a plan to turn that RV into an asset, like for example, in a year or two you're gonna build a house and then you're going to use uh, Airbnb to rent the RV out, 
Now you've turned that possible liability into an asset. With a plan like that, you could actually switch it over into the category of it being an asset. And if you rent out an Airbnb for 500 bucks for a weekend and you do that for 10 weekends for two years, now you've paid for that $10,000 RV. If you do it for two more years, congratulations, it became an asset to you. So you can move things around if you're creative and if you're good with business and if you're driven, and it can work for you. But generally speaking, I suggest buy the land with a house already because that is already going to be an asset. But there's more reasons than just that. Let's talk about this barn and the infrastructure that you see all around me. <laughs> the barn already is built. It already has a well with a well line run to it. It already has electricity run to it. Just water and electricity are huge costs associated with starting a homestead. And unless you're planning on going totally off-grid hardcore, which is a topic for another discussion in another video, uh, there's a major expense to existing, to getting infrastructure set up. Electricity, water, road into your land. All that will take a lot of money to get established, a lot of time. And if you yourself are not able to do it yourself, if you're not good with construction, if you don't have machines that you can do a lot of the work yourself, it will cost you a lot of money. A well, a well is one of those things where you never know what that's gonna cost you. The well guys might show up and start digging and hit water right away, or they might have to dig and dig and dig. You can spend $50,000 on a well. If you go to a property that already has a house, even if it's an old house, run down, ugly, small, you hate the house, but it already has electricity, it already has water, a well, a septic system installed, the lights turn on, there's a driveway, that is so much of a huge cost associated with starting a homestead that's taken care of. So showing up, buying a house, Find something that's a fixer upper. Find something that's gonna take a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Depending on where you look in the country, just for an example, I have some friends who I know, uh, they were able to find a place with four acres, old rundown house uh, for $50,000. Needs a ton of work. They're gonna put a lot more into that. But it's a good start. Like low amount of money and in 10 years after they do all the work and they're really handy, they're gonna do the work themselves, uh, that'll be worth more, it will be an asset. So you can find places that are really low price for some weird reason, and you can put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into them, but at least you already have a house. When you're done working at night, you can go take a shower, even if it's in a nasty, dirty, old, funny looking bathroom, you can take that shower, and then in a year when you got the money, you can update that shower and it can build and grow with you. So usually, again, not a blanket, it doesn't work in every case. If you're a young couple and you're not sure where you wanna live your whole life and you wanna RV around or do a tiny home thing and go from place to place, that's a whole nother adventure and that's like a different reason. Have fun doing that. But for most people, if you just wanna find a place to set up on and live the rest of your life on and start a homestead, I do suggest get the property with the building already on it. You will probably be easier to get that financed, but make sure not to get into a loan that you can't afford to service. So uh, while I do say, you know, a property, land, a house is a safer investment and you are more likely to see a return on that, that's not always the case. And if you can't afford to service the debt that you're getting yourself into, it will definitely be a liability. Because if you put half of your life into paying off that debt and then you walk away from it, that's gone. So this is not a green light to just go out and get into debt. You have to make a responsible decision when you're considering going into debt to start a homestead. It's just not a bad place. If you're considering some debt, it's not a bad place to allow debt into your life if you're willing to go into debt in the first place. So there's, there, there's my opinion on whether or not you should do an RV, land debt free. 
or go the route of financing a homestead. Again, get a small place with bigger property. I talk about this in my Start Homesteading Today course. We have a totally free video course. Click there to join our email list. Once you click there, you'll get on our email list. I will send you a five minute survey to fill out and then you get access to this course. It's five hours of video. Lesson two is all about finding the right property and starting your homestead. And there's a lot of good tips in there on how to do it when you can't even afford to do anything right now. So check out that course is totally free. Click there to, to join the email list and uh, you'll gain access instantly to that entire course. Start Homesteading Today course. I hope that helps you, Holland's Heroes. Now I wanna give you some specific advice, Holland's Heroes, because you did go, you did really good about adding a lot of detail to this question. I have a little bit more advice for you specifically. But first, it's time for the Homesteady Pioneers Camel Train shout out. By now, you all know about the Homesteady Camel Train. We're doing 100 days of videos all about homesteading, growing your own food, doing what you can do to feed your family. Today's shout out goes to Mary Hecker from Ohio. Mary has a three quarters of an acre homestead, but look what she's doing on just three quarters of an acre. She's got seven chickens and three silver apple yard ducks. Never heard of those, those sound cool. They live in her in-ground swimming pool. I love that, turning a, a what is a, definitely a liability, an in-ground swimming pool. You're making that an asset there. <laughs> Having a duck pond, I love that, Mary. She also has a dog and seven cats. A lot of cats. Mary has a large garden and she does a lot of canning. So here's an example, Holland's Homestead, or Holland's Heroes, uh, someone with less than an acre of land, which is what you were talking about, a small little lot, but she's doing a lot of gardening. She's got chickens and ducks, production. Great, great example of what you can do even on a small piece of a property. So thank you, Mary, for sponsoring this episode of The Camel Train. Heads up for your special t-shirt that'll be coming in the mail. And uh, if you'd like to join The Camel Train, click right there. There are still a few tickets available. They are going, but there are a couple left. So join The Camel Train. Okay, Holland's Heroes. I have a little bit of advice, my own little personal bit to add to this that will apply to you. It will apply to some of you out there as well. Things for you personally to consider. If you're ever gonna leave a question and ask Homestead, leave details like Holland's Homestead did because it helps me shape my answer if you leave me more details. So far from your comment, I have learned that you do have money coming in for the next five years, but it's not much. So that's good. It's good to have money coming in but it's not a lot to work with. And I see it seems like you wanna start a homestead with the idea of starting a homestead business so you can make some money from your homestead. And that is a great goal to have when we start homesteading, to turn it into an asset, something that earns us money. But here's the honest truth. I've been homesteading for almost a decade now. It is really hard to make money homesteading. You yourself said that you are physically limited in your ability because of an accident. And that wasn't your fault. And that's, that's one of those things that happen in life that you know, we have to deal with. So it's okay that you have physical limitations. I still think you can homestead. And I honestly still think you could make some profitable enterprises on your homestead. But I would not personally, in your position, count on, honestly, I would in my own position, count on making enough money for my homestead to take care of myself and my family's financial needs. Making money homesteading is very, very hard. It's physically demanding. You can do it, lots of people do it, but it takes a long time to become master of something. So what I would suggest to you personally is start homesteading in any way you can. Start growing those, those, uh, you know, those things that you're doing. But don't count on that financially. Instead, I would find some sort of work that you could do, even with your physical limitations. Uh, maybe it's work on a computer. I financed our whole homesteading in the beginning through my computer work. Because computer work allows you to work remotely. You could work from your homestead. Right now, lots of people are learning the power of working remotely because of the coronavirus. A lot of people are at home working remotely. You can make more money doing something more technical on a computer that doesn't require your physical energy, and you can make that money in less time. So find a way that you can make money doing something other than homesteading, and then even maybe part-time, find some farm work you could do to learn what your limitations are. Even if it's just going and volunteering at a local farm, for four hours on a Saturday. You said you have to lay down every four hours. So 
go and volunteer for a morning, and then go and lay down. You did mention that you haven't started homesteading yet, so I want you, before you go and stake you and your son's future on it financially, to have experience. Know what can you actually handle? What do you actually like doing? You might find livestock is wonderful and it keeps your mind off of your, your pain that you're dealing with, or you may find it's too much for you, you'd rather be gardening. The point is, if you haven't started yet and you have no idea what you're capable of or what you even like, you shouldn't stake your family's financial future on it. Get experience whatever way you can, even if it's just volunteering for a couple hours on the weekend. A lot of CSAs will let you volunteer your time and in exchange have cheaper CSA shares. That's a really good way to get a little experience. You'll be taught, you'll learn. That way, as you start homesteading, you'll have a better idea of what you're capable of and you won't be risking your family's financial well-being on something that you're not sure is going to work. I love homesteading. I totally think you should start Holland's Heroes, but I always am a big promoter of going slow and steady, gaining experience. Our Start Homesteading Today course, the entire first lesson is about why you should focus first on gaining experience and not like making a bunch of money or growing a bunch of vegetables. You should really focus on learning. That's what people who start a career, they go to college, or they go to a trade school, or they get hands-on education, but they spend the first four to eight to 10 years like really just learning, and then they start to profit from that. Then they start to be able to make money. A doctor spends a ton of money and time learning in the first couple of years of his career, but then he can earn better money and, and the rewards from that education. Homesteading and farming is no different. You have to put in time, learn, get, get the skills, and then you can gain money from it. Holland's Heroes, please go take that Start Homesteading Today course. It's totally free. Uh, the first couple lessons are really gonna help you. There's some ideas in it on how you can start homesteading without owning any land, without even spending any money on land. We'll, we'll share those ideas in that class. I hope it helps you. I, I feel very bad for the things that have happened in your life, the loss of your husband, the accident that you had. Those are huge setbacks. You can totally push, pa push through those and make you and your son's future better with homesteading being a part of it. I don't wanna discourage you. I think you should totally keep doing that. Just do it slow and steady, and that will make sure that it's successful. The best producers on the planet, in my opinion, are trees. Trees produce so much for so long of a time. You can have an apple tree that's 30 years old, it still has apples on it, it's producing, and it's produced, that one little seed has produced so much more fruit than it started off as. How do apple trees, fruit trees, oak trees, how do they produce so well for so long? They start small, they go slow and steady. We talk about that in our Start Home Studying Today course, so please go ahead and take that course. I hope this helps. If you'd like a question answered during Ask Home Study, hashtag Ask Home Study in the comments section. Maybe we'll answer your comment, your question next week. And if you like the fact that we take the time to answer your questions uh, and you want us to be able to keep doing it, consider joining the Home Study Camel Train because those people who are sponsoring the Camel Train are helping us to run this channel, put this show on. Uh, and if you can do that, we're very, very grateful. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in tomorrow's video.